Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. I'm up here in beautiful northern Michigan with my brother Nathan and the 2023 Polaris Sportsman 570. As you can see, we've been spending the day getting this thing dirty, muddy, riding it hard, and most importantly, having a lot of fun. So you might be interested in something like the Polaris Sportsman 570 if you've got some property or you've got some trails nearby. You don't want to sink a ton of money into a big 1000 or 800 and you want to be able to have a lot of utility and a lot of uh, rideability all at the same time. The Sportsman does a good job at kind of blending that gap between something more like a work four-wheeler and something more like a performance machine. This is the Ride Command Edition, which has given us all the bells and whistles that you can get on a Sportsman 570. The base 570 model, starting around $8,000, and then this one fully kitted out like this is something around $12,500, depending on taxes, title, fees, everything from your dealer. You'd be 13-ish out the door or so. But this is getting you a lot of the Polaris accessories built right in. You've got a winch, which we have been taking full advantage of today for both moving big logs out of the trail and for getting Nathan unstuck out of this big mud pit here. We figured, hey, why not just start the video right now? You also have electric power steering on this model. So you can actually adjust three different modes from the screen in there, light uh, or rather low, medium and high to assist you. So if you're doing something like plowing in the winter or pulling a trailer with the hitch receiver that's built right in there, something that you're doing a lot of low speed, heavy type work, you can turn the power steering up to high and it's really assistive. I mean, super easy to drive this thing. And then if you're running more higher speed stuff like we have been today, you stop, dial it down to low and it's less intrusive. You've also got a decent amount of storage built in. Polaris says about five gallons or so in this front storage area. And that's definitely nice to have a place to put things because it is more or less waterproof as well. You can see the seal around. Nathan and I have some water bottles in here, some of my camera equipment and some spare gloves. That's you can see where the battery is as well. A lot of protection built in. I'm actually a big fan of this color combination as well. I like the the kind of, oh, how would you say, kind of like a shiny tan. It looks good, all muddy, that's for sure. One of the big party pieces of the Ride Command Edition, though, is obviously the Polaris Ride Command screen. I'll have to excuse the fan running here. This thing did get a little bit toasty, us running it hard. But right up here, you can see this little bit of a dusty screen, but look how bright that is once it actually comes on. Polaris Ride Command. This is a full touchscreen system, but if you're wearing big thick gloves or anything, you can also control it through these controls right here. You got sort of a toggle for moving the map around. Push this and you can get all your various modes here. Let's start off in the top left. Here's gauges. This is customizable and gives you things like fuel, engine temperature, elevation, battery voltage, a compass right there, but you press this little settings thing and then you can bring up other, uh, other bits of data. In fact, you can customize entirely new screens to swipe between. So if we add a new one and let's go, all right, right here, let's fully customize it. You can go data. Well, on the top left, I'd like to have my odometer. Top right, let's do engine temp. Bottom left, let's do ambient temp. Now, actually, let's do fuel level. And then bottom right, how about a compass? And you can customize those the way you want. Or if you want a little bit of different looking screen, uh, press right here. You can kind of have more of a, a just on the side, a uh, little bit less fun looking display of information. Right here is your tachometer and then your speed, but switch that right there and then it's both digital. A lot of customization. You can sync up your phone here and actually get your text messages up on your screen. You can get uh, various phone, you can actually make phone calls and stuff. If you have speakers plugged into the system here, you can listen to music, play it right through your phone. You can add headsets into there, which is pretty nice. Game camera, if you had a, a game camera hooked up, then you could actually view your camera here, or uh, like say you could ride out the trail and then plug in your USB to actually view video files off there. That's pretty cool. And then one of the biggest party pieces, of course, is the map. Nathan and I have been using this all day for navigating and finding cool new trails as we've ridden around. You can see us down here, all these various trails around us. It shows you roads, it shows you main ORV trails, auxiliary trails, and you can customize the various different layers, gauges, everything like that. A lot of customization. If you get one of these, you definitely want to play around with it and really 
curate it to your own setup. Going back to the gauges, you've got high, low, neutral, reverse, and park for the shifter. I should also mention you've got a 12 volt outlet here and a USB-C, or is it rather a USB-A port. Definitely nice to have. All right, Nathan, shall we? I'm stuck. Are you, oh no, I'll have to winch you out. That sounds that wonderful. Deep. Yeah. Look at this thing. <laughs> I know, that is covered. Oh. Nathan is covered too, as you can see. Yep. Beautiful day to be up here riding. That's the best thing is whether you got an old four-wheeler like that, a new one like this, utility, sports, whatever. It's fun to just be out on a day like this. Exactly. So of course, when you're riding, safety gear is important. We've got our helmet on, some gloves. Start it up. And we are in two-wheel drive mode now. If I wanted to go into four, I'd push this to the left. As long as you're, I think, below about 15 miles per hour, especially as long as your wheels are not spinning, you can switch it into all-wheel drive. We're going to start out in rear. Get back over to our map. Oof, I got a lot of mud coming off the tires. All right. So this Sportsman 570 is powered by a 44 horsepower single cylinder four stroke motor cvt transmission that you can hear working away you do have three different drive modes work standard and performance work is going to soften the throttle response so that if you're doing uh, lower speed stuff maybe if you haven't had a child riding you didn't want it to be too snappy off the throttle then you can choose that but I've been riding it around in performance mode all day. Might as well, right? If you're a performance-oriented person such as myself, that's what you're going to have the most fun with. I've got the power steering in low right now. Like I said, as you're going faster like this, you really don't need much more than that. It's still very easy steering. You really only need the power steering assistance when you're doing low speed type stuff. I've really been impressed with the suspension all day on the Sportsman 570. I've been hitting some, some rough stuff. You've got about 9 inches of suspension travel in the front and about 11 in the rear. I'm really taking full advantage of it. Pretty quiet as well. I went back and forth between Nathan's Grizzly back there and then this, and this is much quieter. In this 570 class, it's the type of power that's not going to yank your arms off, but it's enough to have fun. This thing will cruise up around 55 miles per hour up at the top of its revs. I think a big part of it is the fact that it does have a good amount of weight to pull around. This four-wheeler is about 700 pounds dry, so I'll fill it up with fluids and some gear and obviously a human being. A little yield here and you're gonna have a lot to pull around. So you know, when you get on it hard like this, you've got a lot of weight to motivate. Once it gets going, it's smooth. Woo, <laughs> that's a rough bump right there. I wanna see Nathan hit that. I love being able to keep it in two-wheel drive mode. Just get a little bit of that drift action, some counter steer. One of the best things about riding four-wheelers is the amount of control you have over them with your body. There's more stability, obviously, than something like a bike, but your body is so integral to uh, riding them, especially at speed. A lot of lean angle, getting over, and you kind of use your butt and your foot to kick the rear end out and then counter steer yourself back forward. I really do attribute a lot of my ability to drive a car quickly to having four wheelers growing up, understanding the importance of grip and how to counteract it, or the lack thereof I should say. That is a big tree.
ripping through trails like this, the 570 is definitely enough power. It's only when you're out on the, the larger, kind of more road style ORV trails that you feel like you could use a little bit more oomph. But realistically, a lot of people are getting sportsmen to have around the house to do work. So, you know, obviously if you're going to do regular riding like this, you'd go out and get yourself more of a performance-oriented machine. When you get into something heavier like this, compared to something a little smaller like the one Nathan's riding, the fun factor goes down a little bit, but the comfort and the ease factors go up. And I think there are a lot of people who would happily make that trade-off. We've done a lot of miles today and I know that I am more comfortable and less beat up than Nathan is on his machine even though his might be a little bit more fun to flick around a little bit more agile and a little bit spunkier I've got a softer suspension and an easier riding experience so you have to decide what's important to you and what sort of trade-offs you want to make with your four-wheel machine Gosh, just being out here in nature and exploring roads much, much less traveled, it's really meaningful to me. And having this Ride Command app in front of us is just so easy, because like that trail right back there I saw, well, that just goes out to the main road here. I'm not too interested in following that. But we're actually going to get up here to a situation where on the snowmobiles we're allowed to go through the trail, but the trail's not open to wheeled vehicles like this so we're gonna have to make a different way through and using the GPS here we're gonna be able to do that all right this is where we get exploring I have never taken this trail before I don't think Nathan has either we're just gonna see what happens shoot well I guess uh, they do not want us riding through here so we will be turning around. That's unfortunate because this says it's a trail. You get a lot of that uh, exploring. Good thing we've got reverse. So we will try turning the other way up here and seeing if we can get through, but that's kind of the blessing and the curse of GPS is it's not always accurate when you get into these type of situations. The quickness with which you can ride over this stuff really is impressive. I'm loving it. Oh, and that's private property. Okay, never mind. Darn it. So, I guess we're going back to the original trail. <laughs> Shift it into four-wheel drive and do a little, uh, zero to 60 here, or zero to uh, accelerating fast. big steep hill up here that I want to tackle and see how the sportsman handles it. There it is. It is steep. And I don't know if it's better to go to the left or the right. It looks like the right is a little more traveled. All right, we're in four-wheel drive high and we're just going to send it. Now it's important to, uh, to lean forward, shift your weight forward so it's not flip backward, keep some momentum going. All right, here we go. I don't know if I've ever gone up this in any vehicle. Ugh. We'll run it out in the wide. Full throttle. Woohoo! Oh, that's, that's nothing, that's totally fine. <laughs> Woo! That's awesome. 
<laughs> oh, it gets so dusty when you're out wheeling. Again, shifting my weight all the way back now. Alright, slow it down. Yeah! This is a fun little high speed section we can rip up. Yeah, look at that! <laughs> Switch it over to the gauge screen here. I'm going to switch it over to medium power steering mode and just kind of see how, how that feels different. Oh yeah, definitely lighter, just less effort needed to turn the bars. Sportsman 570 Ride Command Edition. Ultimate mid-sizer four-wheeler here from Polaris. It's a lot of fun. You can really toss it around, but if I lived somewhere where I just needed the utility aspects of a four-wheeler... <laughs> Nathan burning it. The utility aspects of a four-wheeler, that's where the Sportsman would really come into its own as well. Having the 3,500 pound winch right from the factory, that's gonna be huge. And then obviously having the hitch built in as well. The comfort, the, the, the racks here and, and the bars, it really does add a lot of usability. And while it's not necessarily built for kind of just coming out and hooning and having fun like this, around the house, something with all this technology and, and the, the usable aspects of it kind of built right in, it's gonna be a nice way to go. So thank you all so much for watching. Thanks to Nathan for coming out and getting dirty and muddy with me. If you have the opportunity, I highly recommend get something like this. Go out and explore the outdoors, explore the trails, have some fun, experience nature. It's a really cool way to do it. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.